Welcome back, everybody, to Farming Simulator 22 on the Silver Run Forest map. I'm an old guy gaming, and in this episode, we are going to try out uh, the front loader and the new grappler that we purchased in the last episode. Um, as far as the game time goes, uh, it's only just been a couple minutes since I left you guys in the last episode. Uh, so I got, uh, I got the containers up here, and we do have a small pile of logs over here that we need to deal with first. So we'll start with these and then we'll do uh, some more logging and some more loading and see how things go. All right, so let's uh, jump over here. Oh, you know what? One thing I wanna do before we do anything else is let's get our debt taken care of because we can, right? Uh, so we owe the bank $80,000, we have $90,000 thanks to those carvings that we found in the last episode, my word. Um, those things are just amazing. Look, maybe a little bit on the OP side too, but you know what? I'm not going to lift, look a gift horse in the mouth uh, for this series. <laughs> um, we're just going to take what we, what, what the game's given us and, and be happy about it. And we are happy about it. Okay. So let's, um, repay the loan and get out from under the bank. That still gives us $10,000 of operating cash, but, um, you know, these container loads are bringing in around $90,000 for us each time we do it and plus and we got the iron going too so if you didn't see the last episode uh, we purchased the uh we purchased the land around the iron uh mine and then we built a furnace slash foundry uh right in this little spot here and then completely filled it well not completely filled it up but filled it up as much as we had um or accumulated so it's it's almost full and it's already starting to make metal for us but we we won't be doing anything more with this until at least tomorrow on september 2nd if not even a couple of days from now we got to give it some time to build up okay so let's go ahead and jump on into our front loader here and i think we can just barrel off the end of that without having to uh, put the ramp down So one thing about this fork, it's it's absolutely enormous. <laughs> um, I might need to look on Mod Hub and see if we could come up with a a counterweight on the back of this. Just because you know, if we fill this thing up with big logs, we're probably gonna it's probably gonna tip us over. But. The nice thing about this is we can do multiple logs at once, whereas, you know, what I was doing with the skid steer, it worked for the, you know, for what it was, but I could pretty much only do one, effectively do one log at a time. So now we're going to be able to load a bunch of these all at once. And these are kind of close to the truck, so hopefully we can get in here and, and get them. But look at this thing, though. It's just huge. It's humongous. Uh, but like I said, I've used this before. Uh, there was a short period of time where I had a multiplayer server. And um, I was playing with a few friends of mine. And we were playing on the Erlengrat map. And I was I actually used this uh, on that map. But I had a much larger front loader, too, at the time. So All right, I'm having trouble getting underneath. Oh, you know what? There's a stomp there. Okay. All right, let's just grab what we can, can from here, which is not a whole lot, actually. <laughs> okay, well, let's just... Actually, that might not be a bad idea to push these out of the way from that stump. Okay, let's see if we can kind of reposition here. Okay, the claw is, is in as far as it's going. And the reason for that, actually, is because it's pinching that log. So if we open this back up, now we can... Yeah, this, is, this isn't a good test of this because everything was just in a bad position there. Um, in fact, we've even lost that log. Darn it. Okay. Let's just start over. <laughs> we'll start over here. Okay. Trust me, this thing works well. 
Um, our, our bigger challenge is we're using a very small and old front loader with it, so uh, we'll just, you know, we'll do the best we can. We'll eventually get a big new front loader for sure. That is in the plans, man. We can scooch a couple of these. One thing Farming Simulator has always had some trouble with is getting underneath logs like this. Oh, man. Okay, hold on. Well, okay, we got two. Again, I'm just in a really bad position at the moment. But it'll get better, you know, once we get in a better position with the locks. So let's see if we can get these to go in there. There we go. Okay. The nice thing about this front loader is, is, is that it was free. <laughs> I mean, we, we didn't actually have to buy the iron mine to get these machines. They were available to us. The only reason I bought that land at all is so that I could put the foundry right next to the mine. Otherwise, we'd have the logistic lo logistical challenge of trying to, um, you know, load up the ore and then hauling it wherever uh, down a mountain and then having to go back up the mountain later. And it just would have been a, a royal pain in the neck. So that's why I decided just let's just buy the land. That way we have it and then we don't ever have to worry about it. Not quite the right angle there, huh? There we go. Okay, let's get this uh, probably lodgepole. Actually, can we get rid of this tree? Let's try that first. This might be one of those trees that we have to use the um, mulcher for because, yeah, see, it's not letting me register the... Oh, wait, never mind. I'll take that back. Okay, good. Now, we should be able to just cut this thing up. For little tiny stumps like this, I'll just use the chainsaw. For the bigger stumps, you know, we'll use... Well, if I can, again, get it to register, it should... We should be able to just kind of cut this thing up and make it disappear. I think maybe... Okay, there we go. Oh, that's better. It doesn't want to register on that little stump there, though, so... Okay, whatever. That, that'll help what we already did. Anyway, for the little tiny sapling stumps like that, I'll just use the chainsaw to get rid of them. But for the big ones... You know we're gonna we're gonna actually use the stump grinder and or a forestry mulcher just because it's a little unrealistic to get rid of a stump with a handheld chainsaw. Okay, let's yeah let's get this one loaded first. I need to really kind of get that stone out of the way too. It's a bit of a pain in the neck where it is. Trying to just back it up so that it slides in like so. There we go. Now, let's see if we can grab a big old bunch of these this time. That's really kind of the idea here. I think I might want to be more over this way. Get the claw out. Bring that down. Well, that's good. That's a really good angle there because... <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what I was afraid of. 
So, yeah, if I can find a counterweight for this. Oh. Okay. That kind of worked. We might be further ahead just to set both containers on the ground while we're loading them. Well, no, I'm... I'm... Well, yeah, okay. That, <laughs> that is like the borderline of how many logs this thing can take. But think about it. I mean, what do we got? One, two, three, four, five logs? That's five separate grasps with the skid steer from what we were doing before. Okay, so we got one in there. Can we get these up in the air now since we're just a tad lighter? Okay, swing that in. Okay, can we swing that one in too? Not quite. There we go. So, it's a little more futzing around, but when you can load multiple logs in one shot, um, you know, it uh, it evens out, it balances out, if not, makes it better. And if I can f if I can figure out a counterweight solution to this, it'll make it even better. At least until we can afford a larger front loader that can handle, you know, the bigger loads like that. This is a very small uh, and old front loader, so we're kind of working it a little bit harder than it's really designed to be worked, but... You gotta do what you gotta do, man. All right, we should be able to get all three of these without any issue. Kind of nice, actually, that that stump is there. Yeah, hey, look at that. All right, not too bad. Certainly not perfect, but not too bad. You know, we used the same kind of weight for our telehandler in our normal series. I wonder if that same weight would work here. So if we go into weights, um, it was it was these weights here. See that that's that's got that kind of hitch on the back. We really should try this and see if it'll work. That's that's weird. LaForge EZ1700. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but I'm wondering if one of these... How does that hitch up? I think these might just be extras for this, maybe? It's got a little hitchy hitch thing there. This really looks like it should work. And we can make it heavier, too. And it even has a trailer hitch on the back. Okay, I'll tell you what we're going to do. I'm going to drive down to the store. We're going to save the game. We're going to buy the weight that I think works. And if it works, awesome. If it won't, if it doesn't, we'll reload the game and figure something else out. Okay, so I'll see you guys down at the store. Okay, let's see if we can get this to work. So, we'll go back to here, we'll go to weights, and we've got this, this thing, that's a 3,000 counterweight, uh, which should hook hook up there. How much is this? This is thirty-seven fifty. How much is this if we make it a twenty-five hundred? It's twenty-eight fifty. Um. All right. Let's make this black. And let's try this. Hmm. 
Hmm. It's not giving me the option to attach it. If we super strength it and bring it up here and then drop it real quick. That should attach there. There's no reason whatsoever that we shouldn't be able to put that on there. But the game's not letting us do it. Crap. All right, let's... um. These are all three-point hitches here. What about this? Yeah, I think that's a three-point as well. Um, let's try this one. I'm going to just, like I said, I'm just going to reload the game if we can't get this to work, so... No, nope, it's not giving me the prompt to attach it. Oh, nuts. Okay. Let's try... What else do we have here? We've got this magsy thing. I don't know. This looks like it might be a three-point, though, too. Because it's got this connector, that connector, and that connector. I don't even know what... Yeah, that's got to be a three-point. So this isn't going to work no matter what. Well, that's too bad, man. <coughs> these Either one of these should work. They got the right attachment, but the game's just not going to let me do it is the problem. Yeah, that's a three-point. Okay, well, then I guess what that means is we just do the best we can with what we have until we, get a, we can get a larger front loader. It's still going to be better than the skid steer. So I'm going to quit the game, reload it, and then uh, we'll go from there. All right, guys, I'm back. Let's get rid of this rock. It's uh, just being a bit of a nuisance here for us. Alright guys, let's go ahead and get some more trees cut here. So we're just going to kind of keep heading up this direction until we hit the border. And then we'll probably go left and get all the trees that way and then right and get the trees kind of around the pond. That is uh, the general idea anyway. Got a couple of pretty good sized lodgepole and ponderosa pines up this way. Oh, I was going to try something too. If we... If we go into here... Uh, where is it? There's a, a setting for... Easy crane, yeah, easy arm controls. If that is on, then what it does is it targets the tree, or supposed to target the tree. Oh yeah, okay. And then what I can do is, here, let's pull that in a bit. And what I can do is I can press O, Oh, that's like completely turned the wrong way. Okay. 
and it's supposed to oh yeah look at that okay so what I did is I just held the O key down and it autom it just automatically lines up and grabs the thing so that's pretty darn handy it's gonna save some time because you know sometimes I have a little a little bit of a hassle trying to get that thing lined up correctly uh, I don't know how that's gonna affect crane control but we'll worry about that next time we operate a crane so all right let's cut this thing That's a nice big old lodgepole pine there. Let's get it up off the ground a little bit. And then head on back. I, I just love using this machine. I know I've said that before, but it's just so cool, man. So fun. Okay, so what we're gonna do is turn this way and let's slide the arm that way too. And then we'll cut this way. I might try the nine meter or even the 12 meter containers too, but I didn't feel like I could do that with the skid steer and move such large logs, you know? Maybe I could have, I'm not sure. But we'll, 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 maybe we'll at least try them and see if the money's comparable. But for this, you know, this time around, obviously we're gonna continue doing the six meter ones because that's what we have uh, already set up. All right, throw that over there in our junk pile. And let's go grab another tree. Let's go after this big ponderosa pine right here. Okay, so he's got him targeted. And if we hold, well, we might need to get a little closer actually. Okay. Yeah, see, I'm not doing that. That's just happening automatically. Very nice. Oh, how come he's not cutting it, though? Um, I'm pressing the key to cut. It does, it looks like it's not... Is that, like, too big for this? It's not telling me that. Oh, there we go. Okay. It, uh, uh, so apparently that's not, like, infallible. It can still, it can still not line it up perfectly. One of the nice, uh, the other nice thing about that little ring thing is that when it turns green, that means you're you are lined up properly. This is going to be a nice big juicy tree, man. Okay. That ought to be enough logs to fill the first container, and then some. Okay, let's hop in the front loader. There we go. I'm starting to get underneath them there. Okay. We lost that one, but that's fine. It just means we're not quite as heavy, but we still have, what, five logs? We 
got the one in. Just have to get the right angle. It's 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 a lot easier, of course, on the second trailer when it's all the way on the end. But that's what I was saying earlier. It might behoove us just to unload both trailers and not try and do it while it's on the thing. Look at that, man. Um, we have room for one more log, so let's grab this one. There we go. All right. No, nope, there's still room for one more. Okay. We can oblige. Yeah, we're a little bit heavy on this one. You know what? Actually, if we open the claw and let the log slide back, or, okay, that works too. You know, just trying to get the center of gravity a little closer is all. But again, I can tell you right now, this is an improvement over using the skid steer. If for no other reason, we can grab multiple logs at the same time and not one at a time. Okay, that's full. So let's bring you back here and go get uh, the other container on. Yeah, 21.7. Close that one. Okay, we're finished with the forklift, so we're gonna send it back to the store. Um, so let's choose store. See ya. Auto drive is amazing. Okay, let's open this up. And get back in the front loader here. I hear a goose. We'll grab that other log later. Okay, so this is going to be a lot easier. Yeah. I, I might, moving forward, I might take both containers off the trailer. Um, it just seems like it's going to be worth doing. I mean, it's not like it's that hard to, to take them off and put it back on with the forklift anyway, you know? Beautiful. All right, let's cut some more wood.
right guys, so um, I don't know if, if you noticed in the time lapse there that I was having a little bit of trouble with the crane and that's because when I set that easy crane mode on, it changes the way the controls work and I didn't realize it at first. So this is normally my raise the boom, which it does do, but it also at the same time extends the crane, which w normally wouldn't happen. So, and then this one is the stick. Um, and that's also kind of moving the stick and the boom at the same time. So it's very interesting. It, it, it's not a bad thing. I'm just not used to it because I'm used to the, the other control method. So I'm just going to have to get used to it a little bit. But I want to keep it because I like the, the marking and the fact that I can... Um, you know, that I can tell it to line up automatically. So I just got to, like I said, just got to get used to it. Okay, we're going to do one more tree. We got a big spruce up there, and this thing can't handle the spruces. Uh, so we're going to need to get our tractor and our winch going. Uh, we already probably have enough wood to fill that trailer, but or, or that container. But let's just do one more for good measure anyways. All right, I want you to be in high gear. And we'll head on up that direction. We're going to go after that big spruce right there that I'm heading towards. And we're going to try and yard it, or winch it I guess, through here because there's not a lot of stumps right through here. Okay, so let's run up here. And I'm going to use the map here to make sure that my guy is more or less at a right angle to the tractor. Maybe even more this way. There we go. Timber! That's a big old tree. I think, uh, aside from the sequoias, which we can't, well, not can't, but shouldn't harvest anyway. I'll bet you anything someone's going to come out with a mod, though, that changes that. And if they do, I'm going to install it. Because, I mean, why put a crap ton of redwoods on the map and then make it not worth it to harvest? If they wanted it to put them on the map just because they're cool... They should have only put a few on the map, but I mean, the entire northern part of the map, all this area is almost all sequoias. So it's like that, you know, it just doesn't make sense to me why they would do that. Because why would I buy that land and harvest all those sequoias if they're not going to be worth anything? You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. It just seems like a weird decision. But again, I'll be, I'll be very surprised if... Uh, someone does not make a mod to change that. Okay, so anyway, let's get in the tractor here. Pull this big boy down to our landing area. And then 24. No, get on the spruce. Oh, for goodness sakes. It wants to cut the other one and not the spruce. Well, that's not exactly what I had in mind, but that should work too. Thank goodness I figured out how to turn the feet thingy off. There we go. And I, since I can grab this one by hand, I don't even want it in the trailer. We're going to put this in the junk pile. Or the chipper pile. I don't know. I haven't figured this out for sure, but it seems to me like if you put a bunch of smaller logs in there, even though they're cut to length, uh, you don't get as much volume. 
I, I can't. I haven't substantiated that though, but I don't know. Okay, looks like we got a full load. Let's go make some money. Just checking to make sure that this is still the best price. You can put these on the train for Elm Creek, too. Uh, but the container warehouse has still always had the best price. Oh, nice. We got over 50000 for that one. And forty-eight for that one. Very nice. Okay. So, yeah, we made about hundred grand. Um, maybe, yeah, just almost exactly hundred grand on that. I'll take it. I'll take it. All right, guys. Well, I think we're going to wrap up the episode here, and I'm just going to keep on logging, uh, like you've, you know, like you've seen me do a few times now, and keep on working on getting our property cleared, making more money. What I might do this time is I might try the larger container, I'm trying to decide if there's any point that I'll in and doing the nine, 9 meter container. I think what I'll do is I'll try a 12 meter container and see if that's a little faster and as long as we're still getting somewhere between 90 and $100,000 it might be the better way to do this. I'm not really sure but I want to at least try it. So what I think I'll do is I'll bring you guys back in the next episode after I get the 12 meter container filled and we're ready to go uh, sell it and see how that goes. And then um, I'm planning on, you know, just doing as many loads as I can here on September 1st. Uh, like I mentioned at the beginning of, I think it was the last episode, I want to try and get as much uh, logging done and money built up before winter hits because when winter hits we'll still be able to work but it's going to be a bigger pain in the neck at that point because we're going to have to also deal with the snow we're going to have to get a snow plow and all of that business too uh, but it'll be fun too so with that I'm going to let you guys go here thank you very much folks for watching hope you enjoyed the episode if you did please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel leave a comment share out the video and we will catch you in the next let's make this that color and lizard forestry episode boy that thing's long see ya